Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Previously on the Tastemaster SA, it was a drama-full day as the bottom four fought for their lives in a double elimination challenge with two hours to create a Wineland's-inspired cheese board. Max impressed with her offering, earning herself the top spot. But for Glenda and Fifi, the pressure proved to be too much, sending them home. Coming into this week, I am still a bit heart sore that Fifi is not here anymore. However, I'm going to give this competition my all going forward. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same at all. It's actually very, very emotional. But when you get back in the kitchen, you feel the energy once again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the top six. <laughs> the kitchen is filled with blue aprons. You guys have obviously proved yourself worthy to be at this stage of the competition, but it's only going to get tougher because from here on, all the challenges are elimination challenges. Max, you have the most pins earned. Is that an accurate representation of you being the best contestant in this competition? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, this is from an elimination challenge. <laughs> Actually, I'm quite surprised. No, Lynn. You have the opposite, you have the least amount. Is that just due to a lack of opportunities or do you see yourself maybe as a little bit inferior in the competition? Not at all, I just think maybe I started off a bit slower, but towards the end it's gonna get rough. <laughs> 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 On to this week's theme. The most memorable eating experiences are those that evoke emotion. And what helps evoke those emotions are our senses. Sight, touch, smell, and of course taste all play a very important role. The one cuisine that really shows this best is fine dining. Fine dining you can interpret it in so many ways. I think it can be very elegant, it can be very playful. So I think it's a very cool topic. To help inspire you in this fine dining challenge, please welcome our guest judge for today, one of Joburg's best executive chefs and owner of Le Creative, Wandile Mabaso. My name is Chef Wandile Mabaso. This is my kitchen at Le Creative restaurant in Bryanston, Johannesburg. Growing up in Soweto, uh, surrounded by many cultures, uh, was almost like a melting pot. And I think that's where we started learning about different foods as well. Creating this restaurant called Le Creative is a combination of all my experiences. For me, cooking is it's not a job. For me, it's really a way of life. To get you inspired for this challenge, Wandile will be showing you one of his own creations right here in the Tastemaster kitchen. I'm hoping that I learn a cool technique or two today, like hopefully easy, quick things to do in the time challenge. That'd be amazing. Contestants, you're the top six. You're the cream of the crop. I want to tap into your brain. I want to tap into where you come from, where you grew up. I want you to express yourself using food. Today's inspirational class, we're going to focus on one ingredient, the almighty granadilla. We're going to turn the simple ingredient into something that the world can appreciate over and over. First, we're going to bake a sponge. We've got our sugar that goes in the mixer, just two eggs. And then you're going to whip our egg. We're then going to add our flour together with our baking powder. Okay, this is our oil. And then we go with our flour and then beautiful espresso coffee. <laughs> man he just does what he wants he's sipping the ingredients having little tasters and i'm here for it if your mixture does get a bit dry you can add a little bit more oil in it our cake batter is ready 179 degrees for 15 minutes straight in the oven yes lesejo you have a question i'm um, sure does that one degree make a difference Yes, it does bake. make a difference. Mm -hmm. It carries on baking when you take it out. So you want to avoid over baking it because we need the crust to also be very soft. I'm learning that fine dining is not as complicated as we perceive it to be. It's very simple, but technical. 
As you know, granadilla is very bitter or tart, and we want to make it very palatable. So we've got clove, which is known as our natural anesthesia. We've got star anise, we've got allspice, we've got cinnamon, and then we've got the almighty black pepper. So we just toast the spices. Once you can smell the spices, then you know that they are toasted. So our passion fruit, which we mix with sugar, goes straight into the pan. I've never seen anyone doing the pulp like that, so that's interesting. Can you smell that already? Eh? It smells really good. Like you can smell it from all the way over there. It's like the strong homey feel. All right, so we add our sugar in. Once again, this is not to make it sweet. Desserts should not be sweet, I believe. And you should be using a lot of fruits when making your desserts, simply because you will get most of your sugar from the natural fructose. Definitely not adding too much sugar into my bake. Sugar is not the way to go these days. And while that is happening, we've got now our sponge, which is finally baked. So we're going to cut our sponge to a beautiful shape. And then now, our granadilla is ready. We need to strain it to take the spices out. So you separate the pulp and the juice, and we're gonna mix it all together in a bowl, together with our mascarpone cheese. So we are creating a mousse. Then we add our granadilla, and then the pulp is quite chewy. So what you wanna do is add a little bit of pulp. Contrast in flavor, contrast in texture, and here we've got our white chocolate melted and then we've got our gelatine which is going to help set our mousse the gelatine was melted so it's ready to go so cocoa butter melted biggest tips i'm learning out of the masterclass today is contrast your flavors and textures you need to fold the cream. You've already created the aeration from whipping the cream. So if you whip it any further, you're gonna destroy the texture, you're gonna destroy the consistency. Um, Chef, earlier when you were making the granadilla reduction, you used the whole spices. Would it work just fine with ground spices? No, if your spices are ground, they will burn very quick. All right, so we have our granadilla mousse already in a piping bag and you slowly pipe it onto the mold. Thereafter, we've got our sponge and we simply put the sponge right on top. Now this goes into the freezer, I would say two hours. I really like the mousse we're being shown today because that is a nice rich mousse that also sets relatively quickly. And I also really like how quickly this sponge bakes. Now we're into the fun part of this, which is the plating. So this is what we're going to plate on. Now we've got our granadilla mousse with our coffee sponge. That unmolding process is so fun. You just popped it out and it was this perfect dome. We've got a little bit of our granadilla, which we blended together with the pulp. And we're just gonna go ahead and give it a beautiful glaze. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plate. It goes directly onto our sunflower. And we're gonna run the consistency that you see on the plating vessel. You can see everything is black and yellow. Just like we contrast the textures, now we're gonna contrast the color. We've got a little bit of edible gold. I am from the city of gold. So, mm, so am I. And what we've also done is we've created a twill. We've used six different techniques using the simple, humble granadilla. I think heroing or focusing on one ingredient is actually a really nice springboard off which to jump and try and create a cool dessert because it kind of just narrows your focus. I think with this kind of challenge, you can go in so many directions. So having one primary ingredient would actually be great. Bondilla has actually inspired me to stop, recenter myself. What are my flavors? What am I going to put on the plate? How do I express myself? Looking at Chef Vandile's dessert, it's a sight for sore eyes. It's so beautiful, it's so abstract, and it's so artistic. And it's like a work of art on the plate, like he intended. Okay, any questions, Lesejo? <laughs> <laughs> Chef, how did you make the twill? So the twill, the very same uh, passion fruit you see on top here, yeah? I just added cornstarch to it. 
bake it for 100 degrees and then you get this. Sure, tasty. You can taste this whole thing. Yeah. It tastes amazing. There is contrast of textures. There is a real smoothness to the mousse as well. So all in all, it's a really, really well balanced dessert in my opinion. I love granadilla, so I'm loving all of these flavors and I think the mousse is really nice and rich. And the coffee is very subtle, so I'm really enjoying the whole thing. All right, guys, so now it is your turn. Let's see what you got. Next up, the top six hone their skills in the Tastemaster kitchen with the fine dining challenge. Why not order from your oven? With precision, raise your standards and make it matter. AEG, challenge the expected. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, today is all about leveling up. Your challenge is to create a plated fine dining dessert that will surprise and excite the senses. And of course, there must be a baked item as part of your offering made with Royal Baking Powder. You will have 90 minutes for your bake. Then once the time is up, you will have an additional 15 minutes just to focus on plating. This is an elimination challenge, but for the winner, a Royal Baking Powder pin, which will give you a handy advantage in the next round, plus an eight kilogram AEG Pro Steam washing machine to challenge the expected in the kitchen. I would love to get an AEG washing machine. I don't even care about the Royal Baking Powder pin at this point. Can I just get the washing machine? I need that Royal Baking Powder pin so bad. I only have one pin. I don't actually own a washing machine. I need a washing machine probably more than I need any other appliance at the moment. Are you all ready to bake more memories? Yes. yes. Your time starts in three, two, one. Let's bake. Yes, chef. Tell me, yeah. It is stressful. I have underestimated in the past how much I can actually get done by myself in a short amount of time. So I think it's going to be really tight today. I'm baking a coffee sponge with a bit of cinnamon and I'm doing a lemon mousse with a salted caramel center and a, topped with a chocolate pistachio roasted layer. I'm going to conceal it under a chocolate dome. Once you do an aerial view of it, you're basically looking into the eye. Damien, you're looking comfortable, confident, but how are you going to surprise us today? Because I think it can be quite salty sometimes. So I'm going to do a salted caramel center in the bake of my dessert. <laughs> Wait, did you just say you can be salty sometimes? I can, I have moments, so we're going to lie. So I see you using some of that infusion technique. Yes. Uh, and I did toast the star leaves before good. I got the mango to cook down. Is this matcha? Matcha, yes. Matcha, we've got coffee, star anise you mentioned, cinnamon, a bit of everything. Why matcha? It has this earthiness to it and it goes amazing with coffee. Interesting to see what comes out. Yeah. Molly, why do you look so nervous? I'm very out of my comfort zone with fine dining. But I don't think I'm very comfortable <laughs> with it. Express yourself, be confident. Thanks. And show us what you're made of. But run us through, Molly. So I want to do a kind of deconstructed frangipan with pineapple inside the frangipan. So instead of making the tart shell and then the almond cream, I'm cooking the almond cream by itself. And then the tart shell is going to just be crumbs around the side. And then I'm going to do a yogurt, pineapple and gooseberry mousse. Oh, wow. And pineapple and pink peppercorn sauce. So... <laughs> <laughs> No, she knows what she's doing. Just show her some confidence. Today I'm doing a ginger and sesame seed sponge, a mousse, a ginger beer syrup I'm making, and that is going to go into a jelly. And then there's a pistachio and sesame seed brittle. Lizelle, hello. I smell familiar flavors from your station. Ginger, citrus. And are you playing it safe or are you taking some risks today? I'm making a rosella with hibiscus syrup. And this is going to go into a mousse. And then a ginger and sesame seed base a sponge. Very Asian inspired, right? So this is hibiscus. It's actually a Western African yes. spice that's very medicinal. My suggestion is use it like tea. Okay. okay. And boil it, steep yes. it. Yes, yes. Today my focus is to take the judges on experience in a temple. I'm making rice pudding, I'm making chickpeas, which is cuddler, I'm making jumbos or gulab jams, 
and a whole lot of caramels and bits and bobs that's going to go on my plate. Nolan, there seems to be an Eastern theme here. My whole theme today is taking you to the temple. I met my partner in a temple, so just yeah, elevating Eastern food, Indian food. I see a lot of different techniques, uh, which is very impressive. Mm. Thank you. And I see rice pudding. So we're going Indian and then I see, what is that, cinnamon and Cinnamon thai. and cardamom. Oh, wow. And ginger Infusing and Infusing the flavors once again. Yes, did, did you toast your spices? I did toast them yeah. and then I fried them in some of the cinnamon and honey butter by Parmalat. How are you going to incorporate this uh, chickpea so, component? So the chickpea is fried with mustard seeds and onions and curry leaves. It's called kadla. I think you'll be representing the Indian community. I think uh, there's a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> all right. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and, and, and let's pray that your flavors all come together. I hope so. I've always had a, a longing to cook and bake. From the time I was young, I always helped my mom in the kitchen and watch my grand make rotis early in the morning. I enjoy going to satsang with my parents on Sundays. At home, when we talk about sweet meats, we don't say that we are frying the sweet meats. We say that we're baking the sweet meats. The baked element today on my dish is my gulab jam, which I've added royal baking powder into. Today I'm combining a lot of my favorite flavors. I'm making a coconut and pistachio crumble. I'm making a pistachio and coconut sponge. In between that, I'm making a raspberry puree. On top, I'm doing a white chocolate, cream cheese, coconut frosting. And then some extra elements are gonna be raspberry jelly, raspberry pearls, a rosé syrup, some twills, or in a chocolate dome. Okay, Mad Max. <laughs> Look at That's this how I feel today. Going? Look what at this workstation already, man. Oh, wow. Guys, it's like I a just, mad artist, right? Time is literally flying, and I, and I don't even have my bake in the oven. This is white chocolate, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay, and that's been tempered? It has been. Confident that it will come out? I am, actually. Today I'd like to take on a South African classic of uputu namasi. I'm planning on having a putu crumble along with a hazelnut crumble and I want to add on a cream pat as well as a panna cotta and a maize meal sponge. Let's say her. Yes. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. okay. It is a bit stressful, the time is so little. You guys want fine dining mm -hmm. in an hour and a half. But it's fine. And I believe in you. You sit in front of the class and you ask all the questions. The nerd is gonna win this. <laughs> so I see pomegranates, I see ginger. What is going on? What resonated with me the most is how you were talking about passion and cooking with love. Today's bake is inspired by my boyfriend. I'm cooking one of his favorite meals, which is umpawa konamas. And his favorite song is chocolate pomegranate. Hence the white chocolate and the pomegranate. I really heard you when you said you don't like sweet desserts. I'm not a fan of sweet desserts mm. either. So I'm substituting some honey in some places instead of sugar. And I'm adding fruits to add some tang and some tartness. Yeah. Very ambitious, yeah. but good luck. Good luck. Good thank luck. you, good thank luck. you. Uh, so judges, just had an opportunity to walk through, get an idea of what's happening in the kitchen today. I'm very inspired. Oh. Uh, having a concept is one thing mm. and executing it is another thing. Sure. But so far the concepts I'm seeing are, are quite interesting, quite inspiring. Mm. It's going to put yeah. them outside the comfort zone, which I'm very excited to see how they function and operate in that space. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We definitely want to be surprised today, but only good surprises. <laughs> Remember, you at home can also bake more memories by getting involved in this week's viewer competition. Show us your most beautifully plated fine dining dessert containing a baked item made with royal baking powder. Upload it onto socials by replying to the competition post and using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA and you could win a KitchenAid stand mixer plus a Pamela tamper with a thousand rand. Happy baking! And when entering, don't forget to include the hashtag BakeMoreMemories. Up next, with time running out in the fine dining challenge, mistakes start creeping in. Choose Parmalat for better meals, better desserts and better times together. Parmalat makes life better and better. Parmalat. I'm busy chopping up some pomegranate for my pomegranate gel and when I look to my side, I see milk spilling over the stove. And then I'm gonna get some milk, cream, vanilla on the stove and keep going. I am like so behind my time. So I'm super stressed, don't even have anything in the oven and this is a baking challenge. 
The most important and crucial thing in my bake today is getting that risotto rice cooked perfectly because in every other cooking show that I've watched, people went home on risotto rice being undercooked. I take a bite. That's good. And it's perfect. Right now I'm busy with my hazelnut crumble that's gonna be paired with my putu. So because the putu won't have any sweetness, it's gonna be very buttery. I'm using that parmalat, honey and cinnamon butter. My surprise is that I want to cover my dish with a candy disc. But if I don't have time, I never said anything I said just now. You're ahead now. I have my coolies ready, the mousse is about to go into a puppy okay. bag. I've got a twill in the oven, busy with salted caramel, oh, making wow. a ginger twill on this end. Oh, I mean, wow. that was just extra. I had the seeds left. You're almost there, keep it up. So on my nut clusters, I've added a spice that I got from Europe. It's crystallized salt with some spices and dried flowers. Oh, messy Max. I'm trying to be clean today, but I'm just having so many crises. I actually. Do you know what, Max? On a positive note, it's getting it's cleaner. Improved. How are things going besides the mess? No, I'm actually very stressed. They're not are going you? so well. Okay. Not that everything is flopping, but more just that I, I don't have time to do like what I wanted to do. What are we working on now? I'm working on a little crumble that's going underneath my cake, mm -hmm. and then also a twill. But obviously, the twill is not essential, so okay. I'm going to do like a bit of both. I have never been so frazzled in my life. It's very stressful. I think in a lot of the other challenges you had someone to lean on, it is a different experience. It's just, it's very scary. You're, you're looking very rushed off your feet. Um, yeah, how are you yeah. doing for time? Um, I actually think I'm okay. I was stressed about five seconds ago. Okay. But now everything's in the oven, so I just have to sort my life out. Are oh, these yours? Yes. Are they a little burnt? Yep. <laughs> a little bit. I'm going to watch over you make Uputu because as a Zulu girl, you know, Uputu is a very important thing for us. Uh, so don't mess it up. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so I have leftover white chocolate from the chocolate dome that's nice and cool now. So I start to pour that into my whipped mascarpone and whipped cream to make my mousse. And amazing, it looks like scrambled eggs. So yeah, plan A of my mousse has failed. Is everything okay? Um, I think so. I try to make a white chocolate ganache and my ganache split. Oh my. So I'm going to try to do that again. Okay. But it's not the end of the world, so it's fine. So this rice paper in front of me, I've never worked with. I'm having so much of trouble. I'm putting in the oil, nothing's happening. You still need to fry then? Uh, yeah, so we used to take a food paste. Oh. I was trying to clean the bowl to remake my ganache and it just went. I don't think I was paying attention. I don't think any of it went into my bake. So you have uh, 15 minutes left. Do you yes. think uh, you want to spend these 15 minutes worrying about your rice paper? Uh, not really. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'm just going to carry on. When I gave a very good masterclass, and the way he just kept our attention, he kept looking into our soul, and I believe the eyes are the window to the soul. I am going to actually make a chocolate dome and try to replicate that on a plate. So when you look at it, you gotta look through a little hole in the top, the window to the soul, and you gotta crack it, and then go at it. I glance over and I see dames making beautiful milk chocolate domes and have a little giggle. May the best dome maker win. If I was an octopus, it would do right now, but let's try being ambidextrous. My third batch of flops. Cream. I think the definition of crazy is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But I thought I would catch the moment between whipped and butter, but I don't because I'm just too busy making four kinds of jellies. No one even likes jellies. Like, we like mousse. Why am I making jelly? So I'm just going to whip some cream cheese, put a bit of white chocolate in there, and that's that. I have my sugar in the stove cooking down and then it starts to burn. But I'm seeing a lot of balloons. You have Max and right in front of her you have Damon and she seems to be doing a dome. So I was like, you know what, let me chuck this dome idea. But I don't think today is the day for me to be doing a dome as well. I'm frantically running up and down everywhere. I'm this close to crying. I'm so glad we get that extra 15 minutes for plating. And I use the pink peppercorns. 
Yes, uh, this is mine. I thought that you can have more. Where's the, at where's the, the tub? At the back there. My chocolate is tempered beautifully. I just checked it on this cold surface to see if it's done its thing and it's done its thing. So I'm happy with that. Last few minutes on the clock, I'm double checking my checklist, making sure all my elements are out, making sure nothing's burnt, nothing is a toffee, and everything is ready for plating. I raced to the fridge to get my rice pudding out from there. I scooped just bits of it, put flour on my board, and then into breadcrumb and hoping I make enough. I have four minutes to go. I don't know what to do. I'm drizzling the sugar onto my roof. I think it's at the right consistency, so hopefully it'll set properly. I get everything on the plate. It's all done. It's all fried. Everything is going perfectly, except for my mango pearls that are now worms. The blowtorch is kind of just burning the pineapple, which is not what I want. I'm just going to scrap the pineapple that has the blowtorch. I'm going to use the other one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Stop baking, everyone. Did you get through it? No. I've not done everything that I need to at all. I'm not gonna have that much to plate with, actually. My frangipan is stuck. I don't know how I'm gonna take that out, so I'm a bit stressed. I'm really proud of how fast I worked. If you told me three years ago I would be here, I would never have imagined. Up next, having completed the baking element, contestants have only 15 minutes to perfect their plating. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Time now to focus on your plating. 15 minutes starts now. Just gonna have fun at this point because that's all that's left to do. Have a good time. My surprise element is now the panna cotta. I am planning to cover my little panna cotta pebbles with the putu and the hazelnut crumble so that it adds a decadence to the overall experience. I'm going to do a splash of my hibiscus syrup over the board and then a little jelly on the side and then I'm doing my layers of cake with the mousse in between. Keep it simple, elegant, give height, use odd numbers, all the techniques that I've learned while plating in the industry, all my different colors, textures, height. I'm just hoping to achieve that on this really small piece of board. But that's what fine dining is about. It's small, keeping it minimalist. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with my plating. I'm just gonna see what happens. Overall, I think it's gonna be okay but it's not a plan. I put a ring down and put my crumb as a base and I build my little pistachio cake. So I've got two layers, raspberry jelly in between, and then I pipe my white chocolate cream cheese frosting on the top. Also pipe some mousse around the plate as well. So it's not just in the middle of the sponge cake. I grab the coolie. I've got to put enough just in the center of the plate so that when I do the compression, it's got to have a pupil effect. I put the cake sponge at the bottom. I pipe the mousse in it but the surprise element of the salted caramel didn't sit the way I wanted it to, but it was good enough to roll and shape. I put that in the center with a little bit of the coolie. I repeat the same process with the next layer, and I'm gonna to top this off with the ginger twill. I feel like my bake excites the senses because not only is it a classic, it really plays on the mind and what you expect to taste. The little chocolate ganache is just little blobs along the side. Just, I'm leaning the pineapple against the dessert and then finally my sugar on the top. Contestants, you have one minute left to complete your plating. <sighs> I've got time left. I think I'm happy. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop plating, everybody. Come on, guys, you can be a bit more excited than that. You did it. <laughs> Woo! I don't know if I've done enough to stay because I look around and everyone has plated beautiful desserts and it's top six now, and so I think it's going to be really tight. Oh, I don't know. When I think of fine dining, this is what I expect. 
I'm very proud of what I produced today. I hope the judges enjoy. I feel good. I hope my career can good some work. As the first time that I get this type of profile, so I'm doing so. I feel positive. It's actually exciting. It's the first time in my life that I've ever looked into myself and put myself on a plate. I don't feel great, to be honest. There are quite a couple of elements that I don't think I executed that well, and I wish I could have just tied it together a little bit more. Today went pretty well. I think I stand a good chance at getting that royal baking powder pin. This is not what I visualized it to look like at all. For my first fine dining dessert attempt, I think I did pretty well. If I went to a fine dining restaurant, I think I'd like something like this. A big ask in a short amount of time today. The guys felt the pressure in the kitchen. That was very clear. I saw a lot of people panicking, but at the same time, I saw a lot of people taking risks. I think you bringing your fine dining aura into this kitchen space really made them take it super seriously. Like we say, the taste is in the pudding, so mm. we need to taste and see. Walking up to the judges, I'm very nervous. I'm hoping that they'll like my idea, but I'm worried that it's not going to be enough. Molly? Today was your very first ever experience with fine dining. How did you find it? It was very nerve-wracking. Some components aren't exactly how I wanted them to be, but hopefully they still taste good. I made a deconstructed French pan, and there's pineapple inside of it. And then I made a crumble with cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. On top is my yogurt and mascarpone mousse, and then I have sugar work on the top. The brief contained a surprise element. Is there anything that we can look forward to? So hopefully my surprise element is the pink peppercorn flavor and then all the senses even hearing when you knock on the sugar it should make a sound <laughs> i'm still very nervous i'm worried that my flavors won't come across or maybe they don't like my plating hopefully the judges like it molly first of all well done for executing a plate even you know without any experience of fine dining I thought that the, the flavor of your frangipan base was delicious. A shame about your mousse not having exactly the texture that you wanted, but I enjoyed that acidity. The sugar, if it was a finer caramel veil, it would have ate and looked a lot better. If everything looks beautiful and doesn't taste the way it should be, then it's all a waste. I think you have an understanding of flavor. From, from what I gather. That's just such great feedback. I think he's got it on point. There's a lot of work to be done to get that high level execution of fine dining. As a first step towards that, I thought this was very enjoyable. Thank you so Thank much. You. Walking up to the judges, I'm feeling so confident. I'm feeling a bit emotional. I've made it thus far and everything is looking so beautiful. I hope they enjoy it. Oh. Wow, Nolan, that looks beautiful. Smell of camphor. Did this whole experience evoke a lot of memories for you? It does make me very emotional to think about it. And I put coals on there because the heat reminded me of firewalking and I remember my grand and them taking me to firewalk for the first time. I was very close to both my grannies. I learned so much from both of them. And when COVID came, they both got taken away from us. I keep them with me every day in my pocket in the Taste Master Kitchen. And they keep me safe. Talk us through the main flavors that we're going to experience here. Starting off with the rice, there's cardamom and cinnamon. And then the gulab jam is cardamom, ginger, and rose water. I have a mango puree and there's tamarind caramel. I hope I'm making them proud. Nolan, a lot of effort, that's for certain. It's hard for me to judge you from a technical perspective because these are all so unfamiliar to me. What I can tell you is about my experience that I just had, and that for me was remarkable. And I think you've got full understanding of what fine dining is. I was very worried about the sweetness, and I think you've toned it down a bit. It could be slightly less sweeter. One thing I appreciate is you actually adding or something savory into this dish. I think that's what transforms the dish completely. Well done. And if you keep going like this, you've got a bright future. 
Wow, I don't know if there's anything left for me to say after that. You made us, who, you know, eat and cook all the time, reimagine chickpeas. Wow, you can be proud of yourself. And I'm telling you now, your grandmothers are very proud of you. Well done, thank you. I feel like I've taken on the fine dining challenge by the horns and I've really produced a plate of food that looks minimalist but intriguing. <laughs> Do you think you did your boyfriend proud? Honestly, I did myself proud. No, that's I love that the response. The most. I've taken a South African classic comfort food and I've elevated it into a fine dining dish. Basically, it's just upu tunamasi in a different font and it's something that really describes me and the kind of bake I want to be going forward. I hope that Chef Wandile will be impressed with my interpretation. I'm proud of what I've made. I just hope it resonates and translates. So, Lesejo, I applaud you by being brave, especially going for a culture that does not represent you. It's quite interesting. It's amazing. It's a beautiful dish and, and also tasting that mint in there just brings in another frequency into your flavor. Honestly, I don't think it's outstanding, but it is it is a beautiful dish. Upu tunamasi, like I've never had it before and I've had it so many ways and I love it and I've grown up eating it. I got a little bit of time with some of my bites and I thought that that was a delicious and interesting note to put in there. Yeah, interesting, I enjoyed it. The concept that you've put together today for me is fascinating, I love it. I had a higher expectation of the experience to be completely honest. So great concept, but I, I, I was hoping for a little bit more. Remember, you at home can also bake more memories by getting involved in this week's viewer competition. Show us your most beautifully plated fine dining dessert containing a baked item made with royal baking powder. Upload it onto socials by replying to the competition post and using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA and you could win a KitchenAid stand mixer plus a Pamela hamper with a thousand rand. Happy baking! And when posting your entry, make sure you include the hashtag BakeMoreMemories. I look down at my dish and it's a little messy and chaotic, like someone we know. I do see some elements that I think might get me in trouble, but I hope that they can enjoy at least some of them. Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be mad to create something like this. Crack it, let's see how mad you are. Guys, I'm scared. <laughs> we can tell. There you go. Oh. So I have a pistachio coconut crumb at the bottom with a bit of allspice mixed in. That's a pistachio sponge. There's raspberry puree in between there, white chocolate cream cheese frosting, and then there's basil and rosé carried through as well. So there's a rosé syrup, there's a basil and rosé jelly, there are raspberry puree pearls. So maybe start with the granita, which is supposed to be a bit of a palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. It's a rough basil and rosé granita. If I go home today, my dreams of being a foodie TV presenter are crushed and I'll be disappointed that I can't go further. Max, a very interesting dish. Looking at it, I expected it to sort of knock me over with bounds of flavour and it did it was very subtle in flavour and I think that that was p potentially because we had the palate cleanser first and that was very flavourful, very fresh, it sort of hit you with lots of flavour and I think it muted your dish a little bit but a great effort and I enjoyed tasting Max on a plate. Presentation is amazing, not all flavours need to be loud, screaming, could have been better in balanced flavours but nonetheless it's it's exactly what we expected. The technical aspects of each and every component is so spot on. I think the consensus is, if those flavors were a little bit more elevated, just a little bit more bold, then this would have been insane. I think it's valid, but it is disappointing and has just made me even more nervous for potentially going home today. I'm petrified. I feel my dish is not enough. I could have done a few more extras, but let's see what they say. Lizelle, thank you, this looks great. Talk us through the flavors, talk us about the experience. I wanted to put myself on the plate, so my bubbliness, my fun aspect. The flavor I tried to bring out is the hibiscus, but to pair with that, I 
brought in some ginger. The sponge is a ginger and sesame seed sponge. And then the mousse is a berry mousse. And then we have the hibiscus syrup running down. And then the clusters are pistachio and sesame clusters. Do you have gold in there? Yes, because I'm from Joburg. <laughs> <laughs> Lizelle, this says so much about you to me. When I had all the components together, from jelly to mousse to cake, it was such a complete flavor. So it's really beautiful. Some of the elements are simple, but like we say, sometimes simplicity is the utmost sophistication. And it's a beautiful dish, but I must be honest with you that, that you've got a lot of competition. No. As always, you finished way before everybody else. And I wonder if you could have used that time to maybe make one more element to wow us. But having said that, uh, technically your bake is brilliant. I'm very proud of my dish. Every flavor I love, every element of texture that I feel comes through when I cook. Damon, did you miss the brief? Because I'm pretty sure that's not my definition of fine dining, but maybe it's yours. I'm a Sagittarius, uh -huh. and this is how I decided to bring through the fire element of it all. Let's start with this. The representation of what you see before you from my aerial view is an eye. So you gotta smash your eye. You gotta smash the <laughs> eye. There's layers there, but it will come through. So you've got a coffee scented sponge. I've topped that off with a mango mousse, but I've infused the mango with coconut cream and I've set it with agar. I've topped that off with a sponge, but that half of the sponge has salted pistachio on it and there is a little surprise in the center of the mango. And then I've topped it off with a ginger twill, just a little bit of spice in between. And I had some pop left from my coolie and I made a leather. I mean, you created a, a great sense of excitement with your presentation, so I really enjoyed that. I thought the chocolate sponge, the texture, lovely, light, moist. I remember you said you put matcha in there, so I was sort of looking for the matcha, and for me, I didn't find it. The theater kind of revved me up for something grand, and I was a little bit let down by not getting all of the flavors that you described. The presentation is awesome, it's amazing. But what we see visually needs to match what we taste, and what we saw is slightly better than what we tasted. In terms of flavor, it could have been better, especially at this stage of the competition, and the stakes is very high. All of that has been said, uh, Damien, there's no lack of effort here, but you sold a lot of flavors to us, of which none of them really came through. It's an eating competition, it's, a, it's the taste master. Damien, thank you very much, we appreciate your effort. So this is the tough part now. This is the tough <laughs> part, but I think we can do it, we can make a decision. Contestants, today there was no clear, obvious winner or loser. This was the longest deliberation we've had to date. So what you were able to squeeze out in 90 minutes was absolutely remarkable. Please give yourselves a hand, you deserve it. Let's all say thank you very much to Chef Wandile for gracing us with his presence and inspiring you infinitely today. Thank you, Chef. Thank you for the experience, guys. Keep the passion alive. Life without passion is death in disguise. Thank you so much, Chef. Somebody today we managed to pick as the best baker. I think I know who's going to win, but I'm not going to say. That person is... Nolan. <gasps> I knew it. He just, he put so much effort into his bake. I think he really deserved it. Nolan, we chose you as the top baker today because you absolutely moved us, not only with your concept, but with your execution of flavors. Nolan, I have many gifts for you. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the Royal Baking Powder Pin, which will give you a handy advantage in the next round. Secondly, because you brought the heat, a chili pin. And finally, of course, you're walking away with an eight kilogram AEG Pro Steam <laughs> washing machine. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yo, this is a, this is another kind of feeling altogether. <laughs> I've never won anything by myself. I'm like over the moon. What? <laughs> what was the headband? Maybe it was the bandana. I don't know. <laughs> well done, Nolan. And with that high, unfortunately, comes the lows because today it's an elimination challenge. So one of you will be going home. The next person to leave the Tice Master Kitchen is. Damien. <gasps> Damien, this was very hard. You are very skilled, you're very talented, you're very committed. The commitments you made to present the dish that you did was over and beyond, but it's the taste master. Taste, flavor balance, that is where you fell short today. I'm sorry, we're gonna miss you deeply. Thank you, Damien, it's been a pleasure. Besides the amazing prizes that I've won, the AEG dishwasher, the KitchenAid, the people I've met, the friendships and bonds I've created with people from all over South Africa, I would not have met any of them if I didn't come on the taste master. It's just really lit the fire within my heart for cooking. I'm heartbroken because Damien's my bestie in a way, but he's really going to leave a hole here. For the rest of you, if you haven't yet, I'm sure you are feeling it now. This game is on. We'll see you in the next round. Congratulations to our episode seven viewer winner, Keisha Roberts, who baked a delicious array of goodies using royal baking powder, including vanilla cupcakes and pizza bombs. Filled with her homemade sauce, Keisha receives a brand new KitchenAid stand mixer and a 1,000 Rand Parmalat hamper. Another feel-good production.